Hi folks, Robin here. It's day 10 on the Cape Wrath Trail and as you may already know, it's a zero day today. So we've been down to Liverpool, we've resupplied, we've got all our kit washed and we're just packing up ready for the off tomorrow. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you what I've been using and how I've got on so far. So let's get stuck right in. Right, where shall we start? How about the tent? Okay, this is my tarp tent notch. Really happy with that so far. I've spent around 10 nights in that so far. Weighs 800 grams, it is a sill nylon version. It's not been totally tested yet um, in bad weather. One slightly bad night in the Rins of Kells a few weeks ago. But overall, happy with that so far. The tent pegs of choice, I've gone with the Eastern 9 inch nails. I've got four 9 inch versions and then I've also got the four of the 6 inch versions too. Sleeping mat, I have the Exped Sinmat HLM. Had that a good couple of years now and no complaints. Well, maybe perhaps a little bit slidey, but other than that, I'm happy with that. Pillow wise, I usually have the Decathlon Helium, but that weighs 170 grams, so being a little bit of a gram counter, I opted for the Nature Hike one that I've had for a while now. This weighs less than 100 grams. Not quite as comfortable, but I still get a good night's kip with that pillow. Sleeping bag wise, this is my uh, PhD's Hispler 400. It's good down to minus six. Right, moving down now to hydration and my cooking setup. This here is just a little pee bottle, so I don't have to get up at night. This is just a, obviously a plastic bottle. That's 600 ml. My Katadin B3 filter is also 600 ml, so that gives me 1.2 litres of fluids for setting up camp at night. I ended up buying the, the longer version of the C to Summit Alpha, Alpha Light Spoon, I think they're called. My pot is the Alp Kit Mai Tai, I thought that was a, a tick on that. The Mai Tai 600, cracking little pot. I've had that for a good few years now, with no intentions to replace that. Stove and windshield is the Speedster stove setup. If you're a regular to my videos, you know I've also been using that for years. Really reliable, cheap and cheerful, and the fluid, they also carry 250ml of uh, bioethanol here in a little nail varnish bottle. I've also got this little measuring cup that I got from mouthwash, that just so it can be more efficient when pouring that into it. I use about 15 ml for about a 400 ml water boil, if that makes sense. Hello girls, I see you. Okay, moving on down to hygiene. I've got two lip balms. Uh, if I don't protect my lips from the sun, they'll burn, they'll go scabby and end up getting horrible cold sores, nothing worse. This one was just an extra one, which actually saved my bacon, because it helped my heat rash on my feet and also I had a bit of a stingy bum through the heat as well. <laughs> yeah, I won't go into too much detail there. Um, just obviously a packet of tissues, some hand sanitizer. These are little toothpaste tablets. They're more eco-friendly than normal toothpaste and you just put one in your mouth, chew it and then brush and they're much lighter than a tube of toothpaste. And my little sister's got a discount code in them. It's clear 10 if you want to try them out as well. Just a little travel toothbrush. Here I have some dog poo bags so I can carry out my used toilet roll and any other little, obviously like the antibacterial wipes. They don't biodegrade and it just leaves a little bit more no trace. These are just seven days worth of my vitamin supplements that I take. They were a must by the way. Um, it just keeps you fresh downstairs. Trekking poles are the Black Diamond Trails, and these are the flick lock version. Right, so the spare clothes that I carry are these Rab Long Johns. Nice to have something fresh to wear at night. These are the Bridgedale Sock Liners. These, just like the small bikes pass. These I sleep in too with the Long Johns. Got a spare pair of darn tough socks to swap over to. A spare Rab Miko. It's a Merino stroke synthetic mix, uh, basically a t-shirt. We live in strange times at the moment, so you have to carry a mask for shops and pubs, etc. 
Monty and Prism gloves. I've had these for years now. They're starting to wear out, so I will get a new pair. Midgenet. These are my lu my one luxury. These are the Montaigne Prism booties, and I'm so glad I brought them. Just having wet feet every day, letting your feet dry out, and then just having something warm to put on. So, yeah, they were worth the wait. I'm glad I took them. Cruising up here, we have a buff, spare pair of Step 1 boxers, sunglasses, which I have been using, first aid kit, that shouldn't be here, that's not spare gloves, um, waterproof jacket, which I'll probably need tomorrow, and along with the waterproof trousers as well. Ignore that, that's just for the sound on my camera. I also carry this Montaigne equipment, Superflux jacket, it's synthetic and that just keeps me warm at night sitting around camp. Right, so for my electronics, my head torch is the Nightcore NU25. This is a fantastic little camera. Really punches above its weight for its size and weighs buttons. Some people actually take these off and put on a little bungee cord to make them even lighter. Here is my 20,000 milliamp RAV power power bank for charging up my phone and camera and other accessories, just some various USB cables for charging. And the Garmin InReach Mini, this has really let me down unfortunately. When I needed it most, it would not take a charge and it's malfunctioned on me. I could just be unlucky, I've googled it and there's the certain forums came up with the same problem, but yes, my, my girlfriend was worried about me um, and if I never met those walkers to send that text, she might have actually called Mountain Rescue, so yeah, I suppose this is where you should not rely on electronics. I don't use this for navigation, it's purely just to communicate when I'm out of phone signal. Right, so onto the rucksack, this is the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor, just had to make sure I didn't say flux here, the Flex Capacitor 4060, and this weighs around 1.1 kilograms, so it's not super light, but it's fairly lightweight, and so far, I've been really impressed the way this carries the weight. These, these panels on your shoulders and the smaller your back, they take about an hour to get used to. And then after that, they're absolutely fantastic. They're really nicely padded. They sit exactly where I want it. Hip belts, again, nicely padded. Big deep pockets here. Um, shoulder pads on your straps here are adequate enough. The two water bottle carriers I really like as well. Uh, could I find a negative in this? Yeah, the top lid is a little bit small, so I tend just to put my toiletries in there. That could have been a bit deeper, but I suppose um, it's probably the way it's designed that they couldn't make it any bigger. The easy access, though, so you can see there, once that's open, is much better than your traditional drawstring rucksack. I find that really good for getting into. Righty oh, so the clothes I've been wearing on the Cape Raft Trail so far are this little outdoor research baseball cap. I really like this. It is lightweight, it's breathable, and it protects my bald head if you're getting burnt. If it's too cold for the baseball cap, I just wear this sort of classic North Face beanie hat, as you'll probably have noticed in the videos. Moving on down to my base layer t-shirt. I picked this up from Taizo just before leaving. It is a sprayway, sort of 50-50, Synthetic stroke merino blend top. Um, no complaints so far, that's absolutely fine. It was in the sale for £45. This was a tip I picked off Hounds of Hingate. He wears sort of similar, I think they're outdoor research ones he's got in fact, of fingerless sun gloves and they just really do protect your hands. And I haven't tested his theory about midges not going for your fingertips yet. Here is just a cheap pair of shorts I got from Costco, they're called Jerry. When I was in Taizo buying that sprayway top, they were wanting £55 for shorts and I had these in the house and they're that sort of summer lightweight material, quick drying so I thought, I'm not spending £55 on a pair of shorts, these were 15 The only thing these lack unfortunately is zip pockets, but again I wouldn't be forking out for that. Underneath the shorts, I went for these, I've had these in the cupboard for ages, it is the Alp kit cooling running tights. Right. And so moving on to my little gaiters, I went with the Montel trail gaiters. These are just little ankle gaiters and they've done a good job of keeping gravel and grit out of my shoes. And I haven't 
to date had any ticks. Whether or not that's down to them, I do not know. But other than the, the little elastic ties starting to wear out, they've been fine. My tip would be if you get something like this, when you're on a hard track or tarmac, just lift these up and have them behind your ankle to save them wearing out. Socks, I've gone for the Dan Tough. They are brilliant. Absolutely no complaints with the socks whatsoever. Shoes, this is the first pair I've worn out. You can see the big hole there. These are the Saucony ISO Peregrine shoes. And you can see there they've got a rock plate. Got nice cushioning on the heel. <laughs> I think all trail shoes wear out really quickly, but the grip started to go in these, I noticed they're starting to slip. But the, before that, the grip is excellent. They really do give you confidence on wet grass, mud and rock. Obviously they're coming to the end of life, so they're not going to be as grippy. So moving on to the trousers and the jacket. These are my new, they're just exactly the same as them in a different color. Got the grip back. These have only been worn in a couple of days. Trousers are the Montane, uh, I was going to say the Prism, they're not Prisms, they're Montane Terra Pants. If it's too cold to wear my base layer on its own, I've got this little Bergos fleece as well. You can see a reoccurring blue theme going on, can't you? So this is my rucksack without food. Before I wear it, I'll just briefly mention, I also carry that orange foam mat as well. It was an idea I got from Darwin on the Trail, big American YouTuber. And it's just not much heavier than a sit mat, but you can obviously open it out, you can stretch on it, use it as a little bit of extra insulation. Got loads of uses. But anyway, we'll get this weighed. <clears throat> is 7.4 kilograms. Okay, now we'll try it with the food. So, food wise, I've got three freeze dry meals, primula, tomato puree, and my little dough and juice. Slip that down to the front. And then three days worth of snackage and breakfast. Sit that in the top. There we go. Right, okay. And with the food. Oh. 10.1 kilograms. So that is about it. I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions about any of the gear I've been using, anything about the trail, just give me a, a buzz in the comment section below. Otherwise, catch you in the next one. Cheers.